Now, um, we campaigned long and hard to get on the Security Council and we're now there. But what difference has it made? Well, I mean, unfortunately, uh, uh, in relation to Ukraine and Russia's you know, illegal war there, um, uh, the Security Council hasn't made much difference. That's the truth. Um, um, when this war began, uh, we, along with a number of other countries, raised it immediately on the Security Council. We called for an emergency session. That happened. Uh, and then when a, a resolution was being put forward, it was vetoed by Russia, who happened to be sitting in the chair of the Security Council, actually, when they, um, when they effectively declared war uh, on, on Ukraine, um, uh, which is, you know, extraordinary, really. Uh, in terms of their, but that, their that's the point. I mean, we did yeah, campaign but, but long and happened? hard to get there, and we celebrated, as you know well, when we did make it onto the Security Council. But what was the point? Well, what happened when the Security Council uh, failed to pass a resolution because Russia vetoed it, and they were on their own in that, uh, was that we immediately, along with other countries, then brought that resolution, or a very similar resolution, to the General Assembly uh, of the Security Council, where it got an overwhelming level of support. Uh, and in fact, the, it was only four countries supported Russia uh, uh, in opposing that resolution. And they were Belarus, Syria, Eritrea and North Korea, which I think says a lot uh, that they are the only countries willing to, to support uh, Russia in the UN right now. So Russia is very isolated internationally. Um, uh, it is true that this war has exposed uh, the flaws and weakness of the Security Council uh, and uh, the use of the veto by um, uh, any of the permanent five uh, countries on the Security Council can be abused at any time. Uh, and unfortunately, Russia has, uh, on this occasion, uh, uh, significantly undermined the credibility of the Security Council, not only by this war, while they were in the chair of the Security Council, but also obviously by vetoing the will of, of all of the other countries, uh, who I think were, were outraged by what was happening, uh, uh, even the UN Secretary General immediately called this uh, an illegal war, fundamentally undermining the charter of the UN and so on. Um, but look, efforts continue uh, within the UN at the very top to try and find a way of ending this war. And uh, just because you're not hearing a lot from the UN doesn't mean there's not a lot of activity happening in New York. There is. But at the moment, Russia is, is simply ignoring that and continuing with their brutality. Um, now, you, uh, and you, you, you know, have heard from Alga that most of that brutality is actually targeted at uh, at civilians uh, and often women and children. So you, do you believe they are war crimes and that Putin should be indicted for those crimes and those around him? Be, he has enablers. Yes, is the straight answer to that question. I mean, I, I don't think any rational person um, that has any understanding uh, of, uh, of international obligations uh, under humanitarian law can look at the pictures that we're seeing and say that they're not war crimes. Uh, and that's, we, that's why Ireland, along with another 38 countries, uh, asked the International Criminal Court to uh, to start a formal investigation, gathering evidence uh, of war crimes, and that's what's happening now. Kareem Khan is the chief prosecutor uh, of the ICC. Um, he's British, um, and he has um, he's opened a, a formal investigation now into war crimes in Ukraine. Uh, we've also, uh, I mean, basically every international organisation that we're part of, whether that's uh, the Security Council, the General Assembly, the OSCE, the Human Rights Council, um, obviously the EU, the International Atomic Energy Authority or Association, and and obviously working with the ICC, uh, we are active in 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 all of that space to try to hold Russia to account uh, and its decision makers and its military leaders. But look, you know, the truth is that all of that is is about what happens in the medium term, in my view, in terms of, of accountability and pushing hard against the impunity that Russia seems to think it has in Ukraine. But the immediate challenge right now uh, is how, how does the international community find a way of ending this war as soon as possible? Uh, how do we have a deterrent in place and continuing to increase to encourage decision makers in the Kremlin uh, to, to change course? And of course, how do we respond to the extraordinary humanitarian challenge that Europe now faces with, you know, uh, approaching three million refugees uh, uh, crossing borders uh, into the EU. Um, I suspect by the end of today, probably over 6,000 Ukrainians in Ireland uh, and increasing by, you know, somewhere between six and 800 per day, I suspect, each day this week. Um, so these are 
enormous challenges and I haven't even spoken about the economic consequences in terms of inflation, fuel costs and so on. But I think the primary concern certainly that I have uh, as a foreign minister and as a defence minister is to work with the international community, in particular the EU, to try to find a way of uh, of encouraging a change of course okay. and to stop now, this madness yeah, and brutality yeah, yeah. coming from coming from the Kremlin. Kremlin. You, you, you are Minister for Foreign Affairs and Defence and uh, the nature of our defence and our neutrality and so on. You said that neutrality you know, is not something for the, for the now, but will be, of course, something that will certainly be discussed. But I'm wondering in terms well, of the, question, the Russian just response... To, just to clarify yeah? that, just, 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 I mean, first of all, Ireland is not neutral on this war. So like, let nobody be under any illusions there. We are not neutral. We have taken sides and we're right to take sides. Uh, when, a, when a global military superpower invades a sovereign independent country, uh, targets its civilians to try to break the spirit of that country, to force its will on them, uh, that is not something that you can be neutral on. Uh, and uh, if Ireland is to be a credible member of the international community uh, that makes international decisions and foreign policy decisions on the basis of international law, well, then you cannot be neutral on something like that. And we're not neutral. And that's why we are contributing to, to help uh, the Ukrainian military uh, to defend themselves and defend their people and their sovereignty. And that's why we are going to, and, and the country uh, is taking such a, a proactive role in terms of responding to the humanitarian crisis as well.